rest field on the mountainside. Pack up the tent and ride. Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, and I've been an avid tent camper for about 55 years. Over the past 55 years, I've cooked a lot of meals over the campfire, and I've learned a lot of lessons, uh, usually because I tried a method that was suggested by somebody else and then realized that there was a better way to do things. And so I decided to share with you some of the lessons that I have learned about campfire cooking over the past 50 some odd years. Hope you enjoy it. To fully enjoy campfire cooking, you should plan to cook some of your favorite foods. For example, for breakfast we might prepare bacon or sausage, potatoes or grits, eggs and biscuits. Other times we may cook pancakes with bacon or sausage or just biscuits and gravy. For dinner, we frequently cook one-pot soups and stews, but we also like vegetables and cornbread, spaghetti and meat sauce, meatloaf, fried chicken, or baked lasagna. If Ava has caught some fish, then we'll have a fresh fish fry. And we frequently like to bake desserts such as fruit cobbler or brownies. My second tip is to pack your kitchenware in milk crates rather than plastic totes. Milk crates have square sides and flat bottoms that allow you to pack a lot of kitchenware into a small space. And their flat sides allow you to pack two or more side by side without wasting any packing space. In your campsite, milk crates can be turned on their sides to make storage shelves. Plastic totes, on the other hand, have wide tops, tapered sides, and rounded bottom corners that create a lot of wasted packing space, and they do not allow boxes or cans to sit flat on the, on the bottom next to the inside wall. In the campsite, you'll spend a lot of time rummaging around in a plastic tote trying to find the kitchen utensil that you need at that moment. My third tip is to find a 5-quart cast iron Dutch oven with no legs. This cast iron Dutch oven is a very versatile pot because you can deep fry fish, chicken, and french fries, you can simmer soups and stews, and you can bake breads, casseroles, and desserts. In a pinch, you could use it to fry bacon and cook eggs or pancakes. A five-quart oven is the best size for most families because this size is large enough to cook meals for up to 10 people, but yet is small enough to fit into a milk crate. Plus, it will be cheaper to buy than larger ovens and easier to clean. It should have a flat bottom with no legs so that you can use it to cook on a pedestal grill, on a fire ring grate, on a camp stove, or on your home stove if you wish. When you want to bake something or cook something over a campfire, just set it up on a trivet or a gridiron. You should try to find a flat lid to fit it so you can put hot coals on the top when you want to bake, but if you can't find a flat lid, you can always use a cake ring to hold those coals on top. The next piece of kitchenware to add is a cast iron skillet that is about 10 inches in diameter. Cast iron allows you to cook a wide range of foods with less worry about scorching or burning. Most campers buy new cast iron skillets, but I prefer old antique skillets because they have a smoother cooking surface, they are lighter and easier to handle, and they are reasonably priced. I especially like old Wagner and bottom-gated skillets. 10-inch or number seven skillets, are large enough to cook food for six to eight people, but yet small enough to pack in a milk crate. Add two or three smaller stainless steel or enamel steel pots for boiling vegetables, cereal, 
pasta, eggs, soups, and other foods. Stainless steel and enamel steel are better than aluminum because the steel pots are less likely to warp and less likely to scorch your foods. Two and three quart billy pots or bush pots are especially useful for campfire cooking. Make a fire starting bag at home with enough tinder and kindling to start at least three fires. In our bag, we pack five Bic lighters, pieces of hemp rope and newspaper for tinder, small twigs and slivers of pine for small kindling, and small pieces of oak firewood for large kindling. I also pack some char cloth, a flint rock, and a striking steel because I enjoy starting fires the way our early pioneer forefathers did. You'll want to pack this fire starting bag at home before you depart on your trip because in the campsite it may be difficult to find good tinder and kindling because other campers have already gathered it or because it uh, might be wet from a recent rain. You'll need a good kitchen knife to cut meat, vegetables, and fruits. And this knife should be around 10 inches long so that it's large enough to process large, dense foods like cabbage heads, but yet small enough to peel apples and potatoes and to pack with the rest of your kitchen utensils. A chef knife from your kitchen is much too large to be a good camp cooking knife, and a paring knife is much too small. You'll need one in between those two sizes. Some knives that I especially like for my camp kitchen are this Wushtoff 4.5 multi-prep knife, this Openel number 10 folding knife, and this River Traders French ball knife. You'll also need a good can opener, and the best camp can opener I have ever found is this No Gent French can opener. This is a great camping can opener because it packs into a small space, it opens cans very easily, and it cuts the edges down smooth so that the empty cans can be used to store kitchen utensils, to mix ingredients, to store food, and to serve as extra cups and bowls. You'll need to pack a cooking grate, a gridiron, or a couple of trivets because Many campgrounds do not have adequate cooking facilities. Some campgrounds only have a ring of rocks, while others just have a metal ring with no cooking grate. After a good bed of coals has formed, you can set your oven or your skillet on a trivet and then move as many hot coals under it as you need to cook the food. Use leg extenders to raise your food prep table to a comfortable countertop height. If your campsite has a pedestal grill, use your shovel to clean out ashes and dirt and then build your fire there. It allows you to stand up while cooking and that is a lot more comfortable than having to stoop down every time you need to check your food or stir it. If the campsite does not have a pedestal grill, then the second best option is a fire ring with an adjustable height cooking grate. You'll need to find a good firewood dealer near your campsite because ethically you shouldn't burn wood that was cut more than 25 miles away and many campgrounds do not sell good firewood. And if they do, it is likely to be expensive. So if you want to cook on a campfire, you may have to find a local firewood dealer or buy packages of seasoned, certified, pest-free firewood from farm supply stores, home improvement stores, or grocery stores. Plan to use about one bundle of firewood for every hour of cooking. 
Recently, I bought this package of firewood from my local Kroger store, and it had three large pieces of firewood, three medium-sized pieces of firewood, and a piece of bark. They're all about 15 to 16 inches long, and they range in diameter from about 6 inches down to about 3 and a half inches. To start a new fire, I'll try to spit, split the three larger pieces down into four smaller pieces, and I'll split the three medium pieces down into about two pieces. You can split firewood with almost any axe or knife, and you can use a variety of procedures to split it. But many of these tools and procedures are either unsafe or require a lot of extra effort. Personally, I prefer a small boy's axe with a one and a half to two pound Dayton style head hung on a 24 inch handle. And I usually use either the upside down splitting technique or the side splitting technique that I have demonstrated in some previous videos. I believe that these two splitting procedures are the safest and easiest way to split a lot of firewood. When you want to cook with a campfire, you'll need to start your fire about an hour before you plan to start cooking so that you'll have a good bed of coals. Start with plenty of small pieces about the size of a banana before moving up to medium size and larger pieces of wood. When you get a good bed of coals, it's easy to shovel a few below your pot and a few more on top, and then focus on your cooking. But that would be a mistake. Those coals will only stay hot for about 20 minutes, and then they will need to be replaced. If your food needs to cook or bake for an hour, those initial coals will need to be replaced twice, and you'll need to keep adding lots of wood to the fire to make those coals. To boil pasta, cereal, vegetables, and other foods, you can just place them in a steel pot with a little water and then put the pot right on top of the fire. But to simmer beans, soups, stews, and sauces, you'll need to cook them longer over a medium to low heat. And the best way to make this medium to low heat is to place the pot on a trivet with hot coals under it. The best number of coals depends on the height of the trivet, the air temperature, the amount of wind, and the size of the pot. Start with a few coals and then add until you get the right cooking temperature. And my final tip is, if you've never baked with a wood fire coals before, start with charcoal briquettes. If you use match light briquettes, you can start your fire very easily and you can make replacement coals very easily. On the internet, you can find guides that will tell you exactly how many briquettes to place below your pot and how many to place on top of it for any size pot and any baking temperature. After you've baked with charcoal for a while, you'll have a much better feeling for how many wood coals to put below your pot and how many to put on top. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this video and I hope that you've learned a lesson or two that will help to make your future camping trips more enjoyable. Thanks for watching. For more information about camp kitchens and campfire cooking, please visit my website moderntentcamping.com. A link is provided in the description below. Take more trips, travel further, visit more attractions, and spend less money. Go tent camping. You know you gotta pack up your tent and ride. Pack up your tent and ride. Good grub cooking on a fire tonight. Pack up your tent and ride.